On February 4th, 2018, the Philadelphia Eagles made NFL history. Let's dive in to Dinner with Dave, Eagles edition. In Super Bowl 52, the Philadelphia Eagles defeated Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and the evil empire known as the New England Patriots to win their first Super Bowl in franchise history. It turned out to be one of the best offensive performances in Super Bowl history. Tom Brady, better known as the GOAT or the greatest of all time, torched the Eagles defense for 505 yards and three touchdowns. But he had this performance because the Patriots were playing from behind a majority of the game. While one of the main headlines was the Eagles' depth at defensive line, providing pressure on the 40-year-old Brady, in Super Bowl 52, it was almost non-existent. Instead, Eagles head coach Doug Peterson stuck to his aggressive game plan that included two fourth down conversions, one of which was a play that will go down in Super Bowl history. On fourth and goal from the one yard line, the Eagles held a 15 to 12 lead with less than two minutes remaining in the first half. Instead of kicking a field goal, Doug Peterson decided to call a trick play known as the Philly Special. Here's how it sounded. This is an unbelievable call. This is like going for the onside kick against Peyton Manning. Holes in the gun. Clement. To his right. This could decide the game. Fourth and goal. Bowl. Moves to the right. It goes directly to Clement. And it's Trey Burton. Who and the pass goes into the end zone. To Nick and Foles. And it's a touchdown by Nick Foles. Throws caught. Foles. Touchdown. How do you figure? What a play call by Doug Peterson. As the Eagles took a 22-12 lead into halftime, they never took their foot off the gas. The Eagles' offensive attack was balanced. They totaled for 164 yards on the ground, including a 21-yard touchdown from LeGarrette Blunt. Nick Foles threw for 373 yards and three touchdowns, becoming the first quarterback in Super Bowl history to catch and throw a touchdown. The backup quarterback, who was going to retire from football two years ago, out Tom Brady and came up with a clutch 14-play, 75-yard touchdown drive in the fourth quarter to regain the lead 38-33 after the Patriots took their first lead of the game on the drive before. The play that sealed the deal in the fourth quarter was Brandon Graham's strip sack on Tom Brady with 2 minutes and 16 seconds left in the game. After Brady was carving up the Eagles defense, the D-line came up with a big play at the right time. Nick Foles won the MVP as the Eagles rode the underdog roll to their first Super Bowl in franchise history. This Super Bowl win slays all the demons in Eagles history. You can forget about the miserable 1970s where the only bright spot was from an invincible guy named Vince whose story went from a hometown hero to Hollywood star. You can bury the Super Bowl loss to the Raiders in 1980 in which the favorite Eagles were stunned by a backup quarterback named Jim Plunkett. Don't worry, Ron Jaworski. This erases the combined 12 and a half sacks and endless hits that you and Randall Cunningham took from Lawrence Taylor, too. This win negates the Buddy Ryan years where the Eagles failed to win a playoff game under him, losing the fog ball, and C Randall Cunningham's leg injury that sidelined him for the entire 1991 season when the Eagles had the number one defense in the NFL, which included five pro bowlers. 
The demons of Jerome Brown passing away and not re-signing his best friend Reggie White can be healed, but calling Norman Brayman a moron will still live on. Forget about the 1990s that included Rich Kotite and Ray Rhodes, which accumulated to more losing seasons, and John Gruden trying to convert Randall Cunningham into a pocket passer. Gruden didn't understand that Randall wasn't the right quarterback to execute Spider 2 Y Banana Man. Put to rest the NFC Championship losses to Kurt Warner and the greatest show on turf in 2001, Rondi Barber's pick six to close out the vet in 2003, Ricky Manning Jr. and the Panthers in 2004, McNabb puking under pressure against the Patriots in Super Bowl 39, and losing to Kurt Warner at age 40 in 2009 where Larry Fitzgerald made Brian Dawkins look like he was in a wheelchair. The Chip Kelly era seems like a blur, especially when he gave away Deshaun Jackson, LaShawn McCoy, and Jeremy Macklin in exchange for Byron Maxwell's poor covering ability and Kiko Alonso, who cared more about going to waterfalls in the Caribbean than playing football. The celebration continued on Broad Street, the night of the victory, and a 13-mile parade a few days later where the entire city was full of cheer in the city of green. Why? Because the Eagles made history, and fans of old can finally rest in peace knowing that the Eagles, this group of underdogs, the team that they love the most, won the Super Bowl. With the Eagles winning the Super Bowl, Philadelphia joins New York, Boston, Los Angeles, Detroit, and Chicago as cities that have won a championship in the four major sports. But more importantly, because of the Eagles, the city of Philadelphia is a world champion. Thank you so much for watching Dinner with Dave. Make sure you hit subscribe below, clicking the up button, and make sure you follow me on social media. Thank you so much, and go Eagles!